Hello, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here today. I mean, it really is wonderful to be here today. In fact, that's why I want to talk with you about, I don't know when you're going to be listening to this, but uh, this recording is uh, happening the day after uh, the election in the United States. And I know that we have some viewers that are in different parts of the country, but I don't think there are too many places in the world that weren't watching the election in the United States because unlike some of the other elections, this one's had very serious implications because of some of the things that have been said that were going to be happening if we were to elect Donald Trump. Well, we have elected Donald Trump, and I say we, I'm talking about the country. Um, you can look at me, I'm African American, I have African American grandsons, I grew up Democratic, so I can tell you right now, I am not a Donald Trump supporter, and I proudly say that. But, be that as it may, I'm not gonna talk with you so much about my total uh, frustration about the fact that he has been elected and oh my god what are we going to do now i want to talk about how we survive this in such a way that we still stay well so that we can show up in our communities and for other people to help with the transition of uh, this uh, outcome uh, you cannot um, help deal with this outcome if you're not being well so there's a few things i want you to think about and that I suggest that you do. As we move in towards the idea of the inauguration day, we have 70 days, actually 69 days. That's a long time, and I know time goes by fast, but sometimes we need to ask the creator to slow time down. <laughs> and if you ask, he will do that. And so I've asked for uh, more time to digest what has happened. So it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry about it. It's okay to whine and complain about it. That's a part of the process. But after you've done that, you've got a chance to sit and talk with your friends about it, your relatives, your kids, and everything else. Then you got to get to the next point. You don't want to stay stuck in that grieving, whining, and complaining, and anger and frustration mode. But it is an important part of this process that we're going through right now. It's evident that more than half of the country is not happy with this outcome. And what concerns me about that is that while we are feeling uh, disenfranchised, frustrated, and angry and upset, we wanna be careful that we don't get into a mode where it begins to impact us so personally that we get sick from this. Negativity can make you sick. Uh, feeling that you have no hope, not having faith, that can make you sick. Now, I can tell you, based upon my own heritage and what I came from as an African-American woman, that um, this too shall pass. Um, my people have been through much in this country and we have survived it. And I do believe absolutely that we will survive this transition and the, uh, uh, the presidency of the future um, president. Hard for me to say his name. Be that as it may, please take that time to grieve and to spend time with loved ones and to talk through what you're feeling. Keeping it inside isn't good, okay? And I'm not saying that necessarily that means you need to go and knock out your neighbor who was a Trump supporter. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying to go ahead and find like minds and get it out. Then after you've done that, then it's time to begin to start fortifying yourself. You can't be active in your community. And we're gonna, we're gonna need to be active in our communities. We're gonna need to be involved, people. One of the reasons why some, this, this has happened is that not enough of us were involved in our communities, not enough enough of us were talking to each other, all people from different backgrounds, all people from different ideologies, just, you know, no, texting or engaging on Facebook is not, is not enough. You have to show up to your city council meetings. You have to show up to your school board meetings. But you can't do any of that if you're not well. So once you've gone through the grieving process, make being well an important part of your regime. Make sure you're getting exercise. People, I, you know I say this all the time, but now it's really important. Because if you're not moving your body and taking good care of you, then you're not gonna be able to be there for your loved ones and your friends and your, and your community who needs you. So that's the first thing is begin to start moving. Uh, when we're stressed out, when we're frustrated, angry, upset, we have a tendency to medicate. 
Uh, and we all medicate in different ways. Um, some of them are legal, some of them are not legal. Some of them just became legal, you know, we just became legal in some states. But whatever it is you do, remember all things in moderation. Alcohol is a big no-no in so many ways in terms of self-medicating. It might be okay to a glass of wine or two or whatever, but binge drinking and things like that, not good. It dehydrates you. And when you're dehydrated, none of your body is functioning at an optimum. And it really wrecks havoc on your immune system. The next thing you know, you're sick. And you can't do anything for your community or your loved ones if you're in bed sick because you've been drinking too much. Um, prescription drugs, oxycodone, all those things that people have a tendency to depend on when they want to self-medicate. If you're turning to those things or thinking about turning to those things, you definitely want to get some help, some support someone to talk to who's a professional to help you steer away from those things because that definitely is not going to help you to be well and be able to be active in your communities. The other thing has to do with food. And I'm guilty of this. I have this thing with Cheez-Its. I think I've mentioned this to you before. When I am upset, I'll grab a box of Cheez-Its and I will eat those things down to the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not good for me. It's full of gluten, full of preservatives, as high carbs, salt, uh, bad trans fat. I mean, just not good for you. If you got to munch on something, and what happens is when we're under stress, we like the feeling of crunch. Okay, you can, you can eat healthy crunch. You can eat celery sticks with peanut butter or bell pepper if you want to. Uh, sesame seed sticks, that's even better than Cheez-Its. If you want to get that crunch, there's other ways to get the crunch. Uh, without eating processed foods. You don't want to do that because it doesn't fortify your body. All it does, believe it or not, it doesn't really uh, keep you from getting hungry because it's empty nutrition. And before you know it, after even eating a whole box of cheeses, for instance, I'm still hungry an hour later or whatever because my body is uh, digesting or trying to digest empty nutrition. So during this time especially, Fortify your body. Unfortunately, it's the time of the year as we begin to move into the winter, people start getting colds, their immune system starts getting compromised. This is not the time to eat, start eating bad because you're stressed. If you're stressed and you want to eat something good, find some comfort food. I know this might sound strange, but I eat oatmeal in the middle of the day with a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon or honey. Tastes fantastic. And it's it's good for you and it does fortify your body. Find those things that will make you feel good, make you feel comfortable, that aren't bad for, uh, for you. Try to stay away from the sweets and the salty snacks. The other thing that's really super important during this time um, as we prepare for the transition that we're going through is to make sure you're getting the rest that you need. Um, I found out yes, yesterday um, when I you know, was talking with my daughters first thing in the morning, they started texting me, it was about 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning because they're so distraught. And so I was trying to encourage them and try to help them to see the silver lining because there is one, believe it or not. Um, I, you know, and, and then I was encouraging some other people and by oh, 10 or 11 o'clock in the afternoon, I was exhausted. I felt like I had worked all day. And that was because of all the energy, emotional energy that I was using to try to keep them uplifted. And I realized that I was really tired because that's hard work, especially when you're not necessarily feeling that way yourself. So. Normally, I would not have uh, taken a nap. I would have pushed right through it, but I didn't. I took a nap, and I was asleep for about four or five hours, something I don't normally do, but my body needed that. Our bodies are going to need rest during this time of transition, during these stressful times. We're going to need the rest. Allow yourself to rest. Don't feel guilty about it. If you're, if you're tired, don't grab a cup of coffee. Uh, don't eat a candy bar. If you're a place where you can close your eyes for 15 or 20 minutes, do that. And also, drink plenty of water. It, you need the hydration. When you're under stress, uh, we have a tendency to get dehydrated. And when we get dehydrated, it's hard for us to focus. It's hard for us to think clearly. And we have a tendency to be more emotional. So it's very important. The is not increase water now because it's going to be hard to think clearly. Sometimes things seem so out of control and crazy. So you've grieved. You're taking better care of your bodies. Now you're in the mode where you really can begin to plan and figure out 
what groups and organizations, uh, what uh, kinds of things that you can do as an individual citizen to help smooth over the rocky road that may ensue as a result of this new presidency. To feel disenfranchised and to feel like you can't make a difference and there's nothing else that you can do, first of all, is not good for you. It also is not true. As many of you might know, I happen to be a Christian, but no matter what your religion is, I totally do believe that ultimately who's in control of all of this is our creator. One man does not necessarily have to have the power if we don't give it to him. I truly do believe that the times of Hitler have passed. We have too much power in terms of our ability to communicate with one another of like minds, to keep that from ever happening. So to fall into that negativity of thinking, oh my God, it's another Hitler, um, it's um, the, um, uh, what's the other one about the, um, the Antichrist, um, I prefer not to go there. Um, what we think about, what we ponder on, many times can come to pass. So therefore, I'm not saying to be silly and ignorant about it. I'm saying, to keep your, I'm saying to keep your eyes open and to be aware, but to stay uplifted, knowing that this is a tough situation, but we can get past it. There are things that we can do and find out what those are in your community and get involved. There's nothing worse about worrying and being frustrated and concerned and even fearful um, and not feeling like there's anything that you can do. Remember the fear that you're feeling is false expectations appearing real, F-E-A-R. Some of this fear that's out there um, is not real. It's not based on anything that's even happened yet. The clock or the pendulum hasn't started swinging yet. He hasn't taken the oath of office yet. Congress hasn't convened yet, the new Congress, okay? So there's a lot of things that we don't know yet. They haven't happened yet. Use that inner voice within you because we all have it, we all have intuition, to help lead and guide you through that time, through these times. And that inner voice will never tell you to do anything that's not good for you, anything that goes against your basic mores, values, and ethics. You'll know which, which voice is the right one, and that's the one you need to guide you through these times. We don't have to be hopeless. We don't have to feel like this is the end. It is the end of one phase in some ways, but it can be the beginning of something else. It could be the beginning of your transition to becoming more involved in your communities, to taking better care of yourself, to setting a fantastic example of advocacy for your family, your children, and your community. You don't have to let this current situation take you out all the way to the point where it really is bad, not just for the community and the country, but for you too. Remember, it's important for you to operate in wellness. Your mind, your body, your spirit, they all come together to create a total person. Take care of you so that you can be there for all of the loved ones that you're so concerned about as we go through this transition. This is from my heart. I love all of you. I wish you peace. See you again next time.